thanks to cloud native architectures and open frameworks like open telemetry, we see an exponential growth of observability data. However, we also see exponential growth of costs and people asking how do we get value out of all of this data. To answer this question, uh, we want to give you a reference implementation. This is based on AstroShop, the open telemetry demo app. This runs on the Dynatrace Playground tenant, so everything I show you today, you can just follow my steps. There was a couple of videos. This one is focusing on technical service owners. There's another one for business owners, and the third one is going to be on platform engineers and DevOps engineers that are deploying these apps. Now, what do I have here? Um, this is a self-service dashboard that allows every technical service owner to get a quick overview of all the services they're responsible for. If you're familiar with Dynatrace, you can automatically filter based on segments, so this dashboard can be used on anything in your organization. In my case, I have decided to filter on the segments for the AstroShop app. Remember, that's the open telemetry demo app that we are using here uh, to show you how all of this works. You can additionally filter on the services within that app because there might be multiple different services that a team is responsible for and you don't want to see everything, you just want to see what you are responsible for, right? So filters work everywhere. Now what do we have on this dashboard? Why do we think such a dashboard makes a lot of sense? Uh, as a service owner, you're interested in how are your services doing? Do you have any problems uh, in terms of failures or performance, right? We give a quick overview and what we also provide you is then a direct link to analyze, let's say, the problematic spans in your checkout service or analyze the failures. So a single click is what you want to provide your engineers and not just digging through a lot of data, a single click that analyzes and gives them actionable insights. So what happens here? We are getting an overview of these service failures that happened and also comparing it with a previous time frame. Now in our case, we are simulating uh, traffic and we are simulating problems on a regular basis. This is why a week ago we had similar problem patterns. The point here is that we automatically get an overview of the, the place order function in the AstroShop checkout had issues and uh, we can directly from here then jump also to the traces. So this is really what provides observability as a self-service. So as an engineer, I don't need to sift through um, millions of logs, millions of traces to find a problem. I start, if I go back to my dashboard, I start in my service overview where I immediately see, do we even have any problems? And if so, show me the failed spans or show me the failures or just go to the service to get more overview. So provide these overview dashboards and only uh, ask engineers to follow the red in case there's a real problem. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, on the right side, problems. As systems grow, it will be impossible for you to keep an eye on everything. This is where Davis AI comes in. We automatically detect problems and anomalies. Now, there's a JavaScript error rate increase that happened on the AstroShop payment or the payment as being the root cause. The problem was open 35 minutes. Now, let's have a quick look at this by just clicking on it. So when we click on it, we automatically get the problem details in Dynatrace. That means Dynatrace has looked at my environment and has figured out, hey, the AstroShop payment service is the root cause of a problem that is impacting 1,540 people. That's great to know because you want to know what is the blast radius of a problem. It is impacting seven services in total and also six infrastructure components. We see all the details here on the left where my AstroShop is deployed. Now, what's very important is this alert here, this is based on anomaly detection. So Dynatrace automatically learns what is normal and then alerts on abnormal behavior. Uh, next thing is I can immediately click on analyze failure to get again to that same failure analysis that I had earlier. What I really like, there's a lot of more data I can show you here, but I simply like the explain with the eye on the top right. Look at this, I click on it, and here we go. We automatically get a conversation with our generative AI. That means, please, Davis, explain that problem to me. And it explains to me that there's a failure rate increase on the AstroShop payment service, and it seems to be linked to a recent deployment via Argo CD. And here's even the Git commit. Um, it explains what happened, and also it explains to me actionable steps to remediate. For instance, rolling back that particular deployment. That's great insights at the time when I need it. Now, how do we have all this information? Because you can see here, 
we have the astroshop payment with the failure rate increase and we also get the contextual information about that there really was an Argo sync uh, of this particular Git request with links back to the astroshop deployment to Argo CD as well as to the pull request. Now this not only works for Argo, this works for any type of deployment tool that you integrate with Dynatrace. Now, Let's get one step further, kind of following the red. We have the red, we can always click on analyze failures and we end up in a similar place as before, right? Whether you're analyzing failures from a detected problem or whether you're analyzing problems from an exploratory perspective, you always end up in the similar screens, showing you the failures, comparing it with a different time frame. You can always change the time frame, giving you insights into the relevant logs and from here with a single click, show me the traces because in the end your engineers need to analyze and understand where is the problem really happening. You get all the traces, you click on the trace and you get to the span of the charge function in this case in the Astroshop payment service that caused the issue and they, the problem was propagated all the way up to the uh, API checkout um, that your end users were calling. Right? So this is really important. Now let me go back uh, to the problem. If I go back to the problem app as a couple of additional things I want to show you. We already talked about explain the AI, we talked about deployments, you can see the events and also logs. We already saw the logs earlier. Troubleshooting is very important as well. When problems happen, sometimes they happen again and again, right? You try to fix a problem, the next time a month ago somebody makes a similar mistake. So typically when you then um, troubleshoot issues, the first time you hopefully start with a troubleshooting guide and a troubleshooting guide in Dynatrace can be done in a notebook. So what Dynatrace does, it automatically gives me a suggestion on existing troubleshooting guides that have been created for similar problems in the past. So I can click on just a few notebook here and I get to a problem troubleshooting guide uh, that was created in the past by a team that handled a similar issue with all of the additional information that they've put in. This is a great uh, step forward to understand what are the next steps in case uh, I need to fix a problem and something similar has happened in the past. All right, so this is a new capability in Dynatrace providing you troubleshooting guides. Now, if there's no troubleshooting guide or um, you want to create a new one, you can always on the top right click new dashboard, new notebook and you get a pre-configured troubleshooting guide and notebook and dashboard with all of the relevant data from this problem already. Cool. That's awesome. Now, let's go back to the dashboard uh, from a self-service perspective. Um, very often we see uh, engineers saying, hey, we, uh, we need to analyze traces, we need to analyze uh, traces that have a problem. How do I find these traces with a problem? What does the problem really mean? Well, you can see here, we give you a table that shows you the latest traces with exceptions. And there's a couple of things we can do. I could directly click here on that link that gets me to the trace. But what I can also do is it says here, use open with Davis Copilot. Um, I can click, I can say open with, and I can click on Davis Copilot. So Davis Copilot is now called the same generative AI to generate an answer for me about, hey, what does this particular trace actually do? What does this uh, error message and exception actually, actually tell me? So without having to drill deeper, I get uh, a first assessment about the exception, about the service endpoint. It seems it's in the chart.js line 75. So this is already pretty amazing and I don't need to dig into the details of the data. If I want to, obviously, I can click here and you are, I guess you understand where we end up. We end up at the trace at the charge method because here is where the problem happened. This is where we have all of the additional details from our open telemetry trace. This is also where we have the exception details. Uh, this is also where we have the additional logs that were captured as part of the trace, which makes it super easy for developers to then um, you know, try to fix the problem. Now let's go back yet again to the dashboard. So uh, because there's more, depending on where you come from, you may not have traces, uh, you may just have logs. So here, we are showing you all of the error logs that, are, that came in uh, with the error type and everything. And, and similar to what I just uh, said earlier, um, sometimes these error messages might be cryptic. Um, so why not just ask Davis Copilot to give you a quick assessment? So you can again do open with Davis Copilot. 
And you can see here, Copilot is open with a similar prompt now. Then the nice thing is, uh, if you're building these dashboards in Dynatrace and you are, you know how you would normally prompt your LLM, in our case, Davis Copilot, you can bake these prompts into the dashboard. And with this, enable everyone to become an expert because everybody can now use these prompts as a self-service because they're baked into these dashboards, like what we've built here, right? So you can do this on any type of data, enrich it with a prompt, and then you enable your engineers. Now, if we have uh, a log like this and the log has an associated trace, single click, right? You think you get the idea? We are getting back to this particular trace here that had the issue. So the links from logs to traces, uh, from problems to traces, from traces to logs is all interconnected and we make it all super easily available. Now let me go back uh, once more. Um, this dashboard is uh, giving us great overviews of what's happening in that time frame. Now if I scroll further down, I also wanted to highlight a key point in uh, performance engineering in site reliability engineering is about understanding patterns and behaviors over time. So what you see here on the bottom are the four golden signals that we put here because we believe these are very important for service owners. Now remember, all of this here is filterable. You can filter it by segments. So focus on a particular part of your architecture of a part of your applications. Uh, you can identify all of this through metadata and you can then also filter further on anything you've decided to put in the dashboard as a filter. We decided to use uh, the AstroShop service names. Uh, all of this is done on the AstroShop app. It's the open telemetry reference demo app. That means the data that comes in here is open telemetry traces, it's open telemetry metrics, it's open telemetry logs. And we believe that this really truly shows that uh, observability has to not just focus on collecting and collecting more data. You need to make sure to prove the value of observability by making analysis easier. Don't force your people to get experts in all the nitty and gritty details, but take your observability experts and uh, build and use reference dashboards like this here to make the life of your technical service owners easier. Explore everything here on the playground and also check out the other videos that focus on the business side and also on the deployment and platform engineering side. See you soon.